Okay, so I'm really excited to show you how to do this because uh, now that we have these time series data sets that are formatted in such a way that they're a lot like machine learning data sets, we can actually just apply the same tools and techniques that we've done previously. So I'm going to show you how to do that with XGBoost. We're going to use XGBoost to analyze and train on our training data set and then uh, predict on our future data set. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to use Parsnip. Um, first, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set the seed though, because if we remember from the 101 course, XGBoost uses random trees that it'll, it'll generate. So we'll want to set a seed. So I'm going to have um, set seed equals one, two, three. And then what I'm going to do is use the set.seed function and just set that to seed. So I'm going to run these next two lines of code. And now what will happen is when I calculate my boosted tree and run the modeling portion, um, it'll uh, be reproducible. Okay, so I'm going to set up my boosted tree. And from the Parsnet package, it has this boost underscore tree. And uh, the mode we're going to set is going to be regression. And then it has a bunch of hyperparameters that we'll set. And um, what I'll do is I'm just going to give you the values that we're going to use for this particular model. But what you would do in reality is um, go through the process of separating uh, your training data set into train and test, and, um, and which we teach in the 101 course. And um, what we would do is uh, actually calculate those hyperparameters based on a holdout set. So I'm going to give you the parameters just to keep this brief um, and, and uh, keep us focused on integrating the machine learning model into the app rather than the machine learning building process. Okay, so the hyperparameters that we're going to use, we're going to first do mtry, m-t-r-y, and I'm just going to set that to 20. Next, what I'm going to do is set the number of trees to 500. And um, keep in mind too that this is going to be a web-based application and user time is very important, uh, meaning they don't want to have to wait a while to get a model. So keeping the trees limited to 500 is going to help us there. Um, the next thing, min n, uh, I'm going to set that to three, which means the minimum number of nodes or, or observations in a node will be three. Um, tree depth. So the tree depth, uh, the max tree depth, we're going to set to eight. So that means eight different levels of trees. Uh, and then the learning rate, which is the next one, is going to be set to 0 0.01, uh, which is uh, going to help keep a, a nice small learning rate. Uh, so we should get a, a pretty accurate solution. And then the loss reduction, I'm going to set that equal to 0 0.01, uh, which just means we have to have a uh, or make sure that 0 0.01, not 0 0.1, 1% uh, improvement will uh, allow us to create a new, um, a, a new tree or a new, uh, a new node. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this, um, or actually, yeah, I'll, I'll save this as the model underscore XG boost, alt dash. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of these parameters on a new line. So that way it just keeps everything organized for us. Okay. Just bear with me a second while I clean this up. Okay. So if I just run this piece of code here, um, without storing it as the model XG boost, I'm just going to hit control enter. And what it does is it sets up our boosted tree model specification. So this is kind of like our recipe. And then what we want to do is we need to tell it which engine next to use. So we're going to set the engine. So set engine. And I'm going to set that uh, the engine equal to XG boost. Okay. And um, if you run this piece here now, it says that the computational engine has now been set to XG boost. Okay. And then the last step is to fit the model. So we're going to use fit and I'm actually going to do uh, fit.model spec 
And this, what this does is it gives me the arguments so I can kind of um, adjust these. So the object is already set for us. That's going to be this, um, the output of set engine. And here, let me just tab this over so we can see this a little bit better. There we go. Um, so set engine is going to be the output that gets piped into our fit.model and that's going to give us the object. So we just need to put a formula in here. Our formula, if we go back up to our training data, so um, this is what the training data looks like and it has total sales and we're going to do that as a function and we're, and we're going to want to drop the date column. We're going to want to drop this column uh, and then as a function of index numeric through M day seven. So pretty much everything. So how we can do that is we can actually set up the formula just to be total sales as a function of dot, which means everything. And then when we give it our data, which is the next argument, the data that we give it, uh, what we can do is we can actually subset it. We can take date, we can take label text, and we can take uh, this diff column out uh, because it has an NA in there and we don't need it. And so that way it's just really like index numeric and then from year down to M day seven. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna take our training data, train tibble, and we're gonna pipe that into a select statement. And what we're going to do is we're going to select negative date, negative label text, and negative diff. Okay, so when I just run this train table, uh, deselecting a few of the columns, we now have total sales as a, as a function of index numeric all the way through M day seven. Okay. So um, when I run this, it's going to save this. Whoops, what happened there? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let, me, let me make sure. I'm going to run from 172 the whole way down. Sometimes R does uh, some funky stuff. There it goes. So it's training, and it's produced a model. Okay, so this model is, is stored as this model XGBoost. It's a large XG booster, 2.7 megabytes. Uh, we can click on it and we can dot drill into it um, and we can learn a lot more about it. Um, but for the purpose of this, uh, we're pretty much complete. We've got our XG, XG Boost model, which is completed. And then now we can move on to making predictions.